What's up guys, this is Coach Donnie with ElevateYourself.org. In this video, we'll talk about how to dig a hard driven spike. And this video was suggested by the Honey Badger. So thank you so much for this video suggestion. Before you continue watching this video, make sure that you watch my passing fundamentals video because much of the information that will be covered in this video will be based on those videos. And you can watch them by clicking on the link up here. When you're passing a volleyball, it's important to identify how much energy there is in the ball. What I mean by energy is how fast the ball is traveling and also at what angle. If the ball has very low energy or traveling slowly at a low angle, you need to add energy to the ball. If the ball is traveling at a medium pace, then you need to reflect energy, meaning take the energy and then angle it somewhere else. If there is a lot of energy on the ball, meaning the ball is traveling very quickly, then you need to take away or absorb energy to control the ball. Since we're talking about how to dig a hard driven spike, most of these defensive techniques will involve absorbing or reflecting energy. Now we'll talk about passing angles. It's very rare to receive a ball in the same direction that you'll be passing toward. Most of the time you'll be receiving a ball from one direction and then having to change direction of the ball to make it all the way to your passing target or the setter. If you want to learn more about how to angle the ball to the target when you're passing, Make sure that you watch the video by clicking on the link up here. The general rule for passing angles is you want to face your attacker first to make sure that you get good contact on the ball. And then you want to redirect the ball by angling the ball to the target. And the way you do that is by dropping one shoulder or the other. Now we'll talk about where you should be digging a hard driven spike. When you're passing a serve receive or passing a free ball, you want to pass it all the way to the net right on top of the setter. So the setter has three options to set. When you're digging a hard driven spike, it's important to keep the pass 10 feet off the net, high in the air, and in the middle of the court. I like to call that 10, 15, 20. 10 feet off the net, 15 feet in from the sideline, and at least 20 feet in the air, most likely higher than that. The reason why you want to keep the pass high and off the net in the middle of the court is that it gives you a lot more room for error when you're passing. When you're digging a hard driven spike, it's much more challenging to control the ball compared to passing in serve receive or passing a free ball. Because the ball is traveling so fast and you might not be able to get your feet completely there, you need to give yourself a lot of room for error and aiming high in the middle of the court gives you that space so you can still keep it on your side and in play. For example, if I aim high in the middle of the court, but I happen to misjudge and the ball is passed tighter than I want, I still have that room for error and the ball will be maybe 5 feet off the net, which is still on your side. The second reason why you want to pass 10, 15, 20 is that it allows your setter to get to the ball comfortably and still be able to run an offense in transition. If you try to pass the ball too close to the net and your setter is releasing from the back row, your setter won't be able to make it because they have to travel a further distance with a ball that's traveling faster. Even when the setter is front row, if you pass too close to the net, you might create too much traffic with the middle, whereas you keep the pass off and the setter has a lot more room to work with to be able to set the ball. Next, we'll talk about how to pass it 10, 15, and 20. If I'm passing near the left side of the court, I need to drop my right shoulder to angle it to the middle. In order to get the ball high, I need to make sure that my platform is mostly under the ball versus behind the ball. If you find yourself digging the ball over the net or too tight to the net, then you're probably passing with your platform behind the ball instead of platform under the ball. So having your platform at this angle will help pop the ball up. It's also important to help keep your hips under the ball and that will help keep the ball high and off the net as well. Now we'll talk about different digging techniques that you can use to pass the ball 10, 15, 20. 
The most important step is to make sure that you get your feet as close to where you think the ball will be spiked at. If you want to learn how to pass with efficient footwork, make sure that you click on the video link up here. Let's assume that someone is spiking at a medium hard pace, meaning you don't have to add energy and you also don't have to absorb energy. All you have to do is set your platform so that you're passing slightly under the ball and then angle your shoulder to the target and the ball should be 10, 15, 20. Now what if someone doesn't hit directly at you, but hits a few feet around you? If the ball is spiked outside of my platform range, then I need to employ a technique called step and shoot. Step and shoot means I'm taking a step and I'm shooting my platform at the same time. The reason why it's important to take a step is that it expands the range of your reach and also helps you cut the ball off before the ball goes past you. Stepping behind the ball gives you more passing stability as well as more strength behind your platform. Make sure when you step and shoot that you're doing it in one motion at the same time, not stepping and shooting and not forming a platform and then swinging out. It has to be at the same time, directly behind and under the ball. Let's say that someone spikes so hard that if you try to reflect the energy, the ball will just go over the net. That means you will have to absorb some of the energy of the ball to keep it on your side. The first technique we'll talk about is driving your hips under the ball and breaking your platform slightly to absorb some of the shock and angle the ball upward. Falling backwards is a variation of that technique and is another way to get your hips under the ball, angle the ball upward and off the net, as well as absorbing some of the energy of the ball. If the ball is dug slightly in front of you and you can't get your hips all the way to the ball, then you could break your platform slightly, which will help keep the ball on your side because this angle is flatter and it will also absorb a little bit of shock. So break it at your elbows and at your wrist. The next absorbing technique we'll talk about is to form your platform behind and under the ball and then to pull it away quickly as you're passing which will help absorb some of the energy. So from the side you form it and then you pull it back. You can either pull it toward your body or you can pull it away from the side. So if I'm digging off center then that's where I will pull it away from the side. If I'm digging midline then I have to pull it toward my body. Sometimes you cannot absorb the energy of the ball because your feet are not set or the ball is spiked too fast and far away from you that all I can do is just shoot my platform under the ball. 
In that situation, all you can really do is to shoot behind and more under the ball so the ball goes upward. And even if you can't absorb some of the energy, at least all the energy will go upward versus forward. So how do you know which technique to use when you're digging a hard driven spike? It really depends on the situation and also personal preference. If I'm receiving the spike above my waist, then I like to use my hips to drive the ball up and off the net. If the ball is at my waist or below my waist, then I have to shoot my plow from under the ball or break it without using my hips to still keep the ball on my side. Thanks so much for watching this video. If you found this video helpful, Make sure that you like this video and share it with all of your volleyball friends who would like to learn how to dig a hard driven spike. Don't forget to subscribe to this YouTube channel where I'll be releasing weekly volleyball tutorial videos just like this one. If you have any other video suggestions regarding volleyball, athletic training, or fitness, make sure that you search through my YouTube channel before providing a video suggestion. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.